Well, Michael Shank is from the Friends Committee on National Legislation. It's a lobbying organization that works on the prevention of conflict. He joins us now live from Washington, D.C. Good to have you on the show, Michael. So uh, this um, bilateral security here. agreement allows for 9,800 troops to stay in Afghanistan to train and assist Afghan forces. Is this a good deal for Afghanistan? It's not a good deal for Afghanistan. If you look at the last dozen years of war making, U.S. war making in Afghanistan, 140,000 NATO troops on average annually, well over a trillion dollars spent primarily on military ventures in Afghanistan. Everything from funding warlords to propping up these informal Afghan local police. We have not, and by we I mean the White House and the U.S. government, have not prioritized political reconciliation. We've not prioritized economic development. Perhaps under Ashraf Ghani, since he knows economic development, he was a former finance minister, worked at the World Bank, he might be able to prioritize that. But this deal, this BSA, the SOFA agreement that will likely provide immunity to U.S. troops, shows that rule of law is not important, that military prioritization is still important, but that political, economic, and social needs of the Afghan people, who are still struggling with high poverty, high illiteracy, is less important. Uh, you talk about the need for economic de development, and as you say, Ashraf Ghani has been very vocal about that in the past. But, I mean, the fact that remains, billions of U.S. dollars have already gone into Afghanistan. Uh, it hasn't seemed to have stabilized the country at all. It hasn't. Those billions have gone primarily to foreign contractors, either defense contractors or development contractors. I've written extensively about the waste, fraud, corruption, and abuse in the Pentagon and within contractors, foreign contractors operating in Afghanistan, war profiteering off these contracts, billions of dollars ushered through. You know, we've spent $100 billion on reconstruction, but as I mentioned, poverty and illiteracy are quite high. 50% of rural communities in Afghanistan don't have access to clean water. So you're not seeing the kind of stabilization that Secretary Kerry has claimed. We're not seeing the safety that Michael Hanlon has claimed. This is not a success. Well over a trillion hundreds of thousands of troops. We have 50,000 NATO troops still there. And because we've prioritized military engagement, we haven't prioritized political reconciliation. Ashraf Ghani, to his credit, I met with him in 2009, always prioritizing economic development. He said recently this week that he's weary of war. Certainly Afghans are weary of war, and he's inviting Taliban to the table. This is all good news. He's probably more amenable to political reconciliation and economic development than I mean, Karzai. Well, I mean, that, that's really new. It's interesting that you mentioned that, 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 that uh, of course, the Taliban have been invited by Ashraf Ghani to uh, join peace talks. Do you think he will be more successful than his predecessor? Because uh, Karzai also extended the same invitation. Ashraf Ghani is a friend of Washington. He spent many years here when he's done his rounds. Everyone knows him. Uh, he's got very good relationships with Washington, which is a problem. Taliban sees him as a pawn of the U.S., which is unfortunate. Now, maybe Abdullah Abdullah, the, the sharing agreement that they've forged, will be able to reach out to the Taliban uh, more effectively than Ashraf Ghani, simply because of Ashraf's uh, cozy relationship with the West. But it's going to take the U.S. support, the West support, to reach out to the Taliban in ways that we've tried in recent years but not fully executed.